Thank you. Moving on to another story. This is very interesting. One of America's leading neuroscientists is Nancy Anderson. She pioneered preeminent work on schizophrenia in the United States. However, all of her research, which includes the use of brain imaging technology, was to support her main obsession, which is examining the link between creativity and mental illness. In a recent article, she writes about her fascination with Kurt Vonnegut's genius and mental illness. It was a pattern that ran in his family. Well, Dr. Nancy Anderson is the chair of psychiatry at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, and she joins us from, uh, from Aspen, Colorado, where she will speak at the Aspen's Institute Aspen Ideas Festival on Saturday. Welcome to the show, and my executive producer is, is correcting me in my ear. How do I correctly say your name, doctor? Uh, Andreasen is how I usually pronounce it. Andreasen, forgive me for that mispronunci uh, mispronunciation. That's okay. But uh, welcome to Arise America. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, first of all, let me just ask you, in, in the work that you've done, um, how often is creative genius linked to some sort of mental illness? It, that's not a simple question to answer. <laughs> it depends a little bit on, uh, on who you study. I did an early study of writers. The uh, Iowa has a very famous creative writing program, uh, the Writers' Workshop. And when I studied those writers, they had a rate of depression of 80%. And they had a very high rate of depression in their family members as well. And they had a high rate of creativity in their relatives. I'm now doing a second study where I'm looking at a mixture of artists and scientists. And the rates are lower but they're still very high. You know what, I, I read uh, a very uh, exhaustive and thorough article that uh, I believe you wrote in The Atlantic, and, and you raised some specific questions in this article, so I just want to ask them back to you. First is, what's the difference in nature and nurture? Uh, what difference in nature and nurture can, that can explain some people who suffer from mental illness and some who don't? Well, the nature-nurture issue is a really important question, uh, both for creativity and for mental illness. We who work in psychiatry really like to minimize the notion that parenting pr produces mental illness, because most parents are doing their best. There was a time when people said, oh, this person developed schizophrenia, she had a bad mother, or he had a bad mother. So in, in the case of these severe mental illnesses, uh, heredity genes, nature is very important. If we switch over to creativity, however, uh, nature and nurture both make big contributions. Creativity runs in families, and uh, people who are highly creative probably have some you know, learning from being in an enriched environment. But the other thing about it is that you, if you have a creative nature, if you don't live in a place that it's going to nurture it, you're going to really miss out. I, I appreciate this because I was a woman coming up in science and medicine when women really weren't wanted. And I've written a book on creativity. I've dedicated it to the lost geniuses of the world because I think of the kids in Africa or other parts of the world that aren't even getting an education, let alone uh, a, a chance to develop creativity. You know, this next question, and I, I fully acknowledge that it's not simply explained and, pro and can't be done very quickly, and we just really have a few minutes left, but can you sort of parse out the connection between IQ and creativity and how that relates to then mental illness? Well, we have a natural confusion when people think about IQ and creativity because people tend to use the word genius to refer to high IQ. They use the word genius to refer to high creativity. But there's actually quite a lot of evidence that indicates that you can have a high IQ and not necessarily be highly creative. There was a great study done by a man named Terman in the early to mid 20th century of high IQ people. and. In California, very few of them did anything creative. What I've seemed to find in my work is that if you have an IQ of, say, 120 or better, uh, that's about all you need. Mm, I see. And, you know, let me just ask you one more quick question before I let you go. Is, is it an issue of 
Um, is it an issue of those who have this high creativity, perhaps having so much going on in their brain that they don't know how to process it and assimilate it, and that might push them toward some mental illness, or there's some other correlation? Well, that's a part of it. I, you know, I have a saying, we have it in science, if you work at the cutting edge, you're likely to bleed. Hmm. If people who are creative are adventuresome, they take risks, and when you and they see things that other people can't see that are obvious to them, and so they experience rejections. And I think that is both an essence of creativity and yet also something that predisposes to mental illness. Man, such fascinating work, and we unfortunately just don't have enough time to talk about it more. But thank you so much, Dr. Nancy Andreessen. Thank it's you good very to talk much. to you.